will hear a conversation between two students who have just started college. The two students are making plans for the evening. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 3. Hi Lydia, how was your French class? I enjoyed it. Françoise, the teacher, she's really nice and friendly. What about you? You're in the exam class, aren't you? Yes, it was good. There's a lot of work, but I think I'm going to enjoy it. Anyway, we were going to meet up later, weren't we? To see what the city centre's like. Do you still want to go? Definitely, yes. Some of the people in my class went out last night and had a great time. Where would you like to go? What would you like to do? I'm not that bothered, really. We could walk around for a while, do some window shopping, see some local sites. I wouldn't mind seeing a film later in the evening if you'd like to. My host family are cooking, so I don't think I'll be hungry for a meal or anything like that. I don't really want to stay out too late. No clubs or anything. What about you? Let's just see how we feel when we get there, shall we? My teacher told me it's late night shopping, so there should be lots to do. Shall I meet you after school? Before you hear more of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 4 to 10. Well, I need to go back to my host family first. As I said, they're cooking me a meal and it'll be a chance to meet all their family. Shall I come to your house when I've finished? You're with a host family as well, aren't you? Yes, I haven't memorised the address yet. Uh, wait a minute. Where's that card they gave me earlier? Here it is. Have you got a pen? Hang on. Right. Yes, what is it? OK, it's Mr and Mrs Andrews. You don't need that, do you? Here we are. The address. It's 60 Mayweather Road. It's in Coldfields, not far from the city centre, actually. My house is on the 14 bus route. It's easy to find. It's just across the road from the police station. If you get lost, here's the telephone number. 01764 38864. Shall we say about six? OK, that'll give me time to get ready. I'd like to find somewhere that sells paper and pens if possible. I'm sure you'll find somewhere. I'm hoping there's a bookshop. The teacher has recommended a good grammar practice book for the course. If we've got time, I could use this voucher the school gave us for a free coffee in the library cafe. Oh yes, I've got one of them too. Good idea. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a tutor giving students a tour of a self-access center. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16.
OK, so here we are on the first floor. The self-access centre is just along here on the left. This room's very popular with students and can get quite busy. When it's quiet, you can come here as often as you want. But if there's a lot of demand, such as coming up to exam time, we have to limit sessions to make sure everyone gets a chance to use the resources. If you'd like to follow me in, so here we are. As you can see, it's a lovely bright room with lots of resources to help you with your English studies. Over there against the wall, we have a row of internet connected computers. As you can imagine, these get taken very quickly with students wanting to check their email, Facebook, that kind of thing. Because of the demand, we ask students to try and stick to about 30 minutes maximum. You'll need to log in with your username and password. You should have created these already during your induction. Please do not share your details with anyone else and please make sure you read our policy on using the Internet. I mentioned the help desk earlier and that's it over there just past the computers in the corner. There are usually two members of staff available to help you and these will often be teachers so if you have any language questions that's where you can go. Now over there you can see the reference section. You'll find dictionaries, exam practice tests, vocabulary and grammar books. I should point out that these books are for reference only and we don't offer a loan service. We are allowed to make photocopies of one or two pages, so if there's an exercise you need a copy of, ask the staff to help. Now, these computers on the oval table here, there are high-spec PCs. You'll find programs to help you with your English, but also opportunities to practice other languages, such as Spanish, Chinese, German, several languages in fact. Some of them require a CD-ROM. You can collect them from the help desk. Oh, by the way, there's no internet connection on these computers, nor any office software for the time being. If you want to do any word processing, you'll need to use one of the laptops we keep for this purpose. Again, see the staff if you need one of these. Before you hear the rest of the tour, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Some of you were asking earlier about extra listening practice and these small rooms here are dedicated language labs. If you want to use this resource, see a member of staff to buy a set of headphones. And finally here on the left, we have two stands with our large collection of readers. These are simplified novels by well-known British authors like um, Charlotte Bronte, Charles Dickens and Shakespeare. The books are graded and you'll find lots that will be appropriate to your level. Unlike the reference books, you can take these readers home and keep them for up to 14 days. I think that's everything. The centre is open from 8.30 till 5.30 during the week, so as your classes start at 9, those of you who get here early can use the resource before your lesson. Although it's open all day long, it's booked by a tutor for their class now and again, so you might not be able to gain access if you have any free time during the day, it's best to ask the tutor concerned if it's okay to pop in. Oh, and it's open on Saturday as well, just for a few hours, from 10 till 1. That is the end of part 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a tutor talking to a student during a tutorial. The tutor is giving the student feedback on an essay. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24.
Hello, Jacob. Come in and take a seat. How are you finding the course? Very good. I'm really enjoying myself. Good. Well, I've had a look at the first draft of your assignment, and it shows a great deal of promise. How well do you think you answered the question? I think I dealt with the task okay. I spent hours in the library reading up on the subject, so I feel confident I answered the question. I'm not sure about my Spanish, though. Well, for a first draft, I was very happy with the content. You've included all the important points, and you've given a very balanced argument, so I'm pleased with that. I think one area you need to work on is organization. Yes, my other tutor said the same thing about another piece of writing. My ideas weren't organized logically, she said. Well, to be fair, I think the order of your ideas here is fine. It's your paragraphing that's the problem. If you look at this page, it's difficult to actually see your organization. Your ideas are in the right order, but I can't make the organization out very well because there aren't any paragraphs. Yes, I see what you mean. Perhaps if I left a line between paragraphs, it would make it clearer. Yes, that's an excellent idea. Have a look at paragraphs in books, magazines, newspapers, that kind of thing. There's no need to read everything, just pay attention to how paragraphs are presented. Before you hear more of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. OK. I'll have a look at some of my friends' work as well. They don't seem to have this problem. What about the style of the writing? Is that OK? I've never really learnt how to write formally, so I'm always a bit worried about this when I write an essay. The register is very good, Jacob. No problem at all. You've used lots of nice set expressions we'd expect to find in a piece of writing like this, and used them very naturally. That's good. What about my Spanish? Your basic grammar is OK. You haven't made many mistakes, so that's good. What I would suggest is trying to experiment more with advanced sentence structures. Yours tend to be on the short side. That's OK when short sentences are required, but sometimes combining two sentences into one can make the essay flow more naturally. Have you got anything I can use to practice that? Any books or websites I could visit? Yes, no problem. I'll give you one of our worksheets in a minute. You can take it away and work on it before you write your second draft. Finally, another thing you could think about is using more advanced vocabulary. Again, the words you've used are fine, but there are more advanced synonyms that would fit more appropriately in an essay like this. Well, I've bought a thesaurus. Yes, that's just what you need. As you can see, I've underlined where I think you could make changes, but I haven't suggested any synonyms. Use your thesaurus to try and find some alternatives. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a lecturer giving a talk about work placements for psychology students. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Good morning. I'm here today to talk about the placement that's offered to all psychology students. As you all know, this takes place in the third year of the Psychology BSc. 
I'm here to explain a little about the placement and how the process works. A lot of preparations involved in getting these placements right, so you need to be thinking about this now. Students taking up a placement year benefit immensely from the experience. To find decent employment in the field of psychology, the chances are you'll need to undertake some form of postgraduate training, such as one of our master's courses. These courses invariably demand experience in the field you intend to study. So being able to gain this experience during your undergraduate degree is a great advantage. There's a lot to be gained from joining the scheme. Of course, it will help you identify the areas of psychology you may or may not be interested in. And you'll develop transferable skills such as problem-solving, team-working, communication skills, skills that employers demand and that graduates often lack. Also remember that the placement will offer you networking opportunities to become acquainted with key players in your field. Many of our students who've completed a placement year take up a position with the same employer after graduation or after successfully completing postgraduate training. In fact, many of our students from previous years now hold influential positions in the police, the health service and the private sector as a direct result of their placements. The placement you choose will depend very much on your own area of interest. Those of you who have a particular interest in research can opt for a placement in a hospital unit here or abroad, working in areas of forensic and clinical psychology. A post here can be very rewarding and allows you to contribute to qualitative and quantitative research data and learn practical research skills you can use in your coursework. For those who prefer hands-on experience of working with patients, there are a wide range of options available. We have links with several charitable and public sector organizations that support stroke patients and people recovering from serious physical trauma, for example due to motoring or industrial accidents. You'll have the opportunity to help them deal with long-term clinical treatment and pain management. There are several opportunities to work with addiction and rehabilitation units. The kind of experience you'll gain here can be very wide-ranging. For example, offering you the chance to observe group therapy and one-to-one -one counseling sessions for anxiety and anger management classes. Students are encouraged to give their reaction to sessions during regular team meetings, which can often be of benefit to both the student and the organization. For those of you interested in the application of psychology in education, we have a number of students who take placements working with children with special educational needs. Students in the past have worked as teaching assistants and contributed to teacher training workshops. There's a lot more information about this on the website, including case studies written by some of our previous students. These will give you a much wider and richer picture of our placements. As I said earlier, you should already be giving this some serious thought. Our placement officer, Greg Smith, will be able to advise you about the organizations we have contacts with and we've worked with in the past. Once you've discussed the opportunities available, we ask you to contact the organization concerned to investigate potential positions and to arrange an interview. Your personal tutor will be able to help you with updating your CV and interview skills. During the enrollment process, you'll have been notified of the need to obtain a CRB check. In cases where you're working with vulnerable people, it's a legal requirement that you've had a Criminal Records Bureau check carried out. Without this, we won't be able to approve the placement. If you haven't yet arranged this, you must notify the placement officer of this during your first meeting. He'll give you the necessary paperwork to make your application. Once you have the certificate, please supply a photocopy to the placement officer. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
down here. Yeah.